Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Jesus offended the people of his hometown by claiming to be God. He said he was the great I Am, and that got people concerned. Today, he wants to continue with this theme of who he is as he speaks to us about where we put our faith really does matter. I want to be cruel to you this morning. If you skip breakfast, I want to talk about food. Some of us probably had that problem this morning getting ready. When Jesus first spoke these words of bread in the synagogue, that's what the people of his day wanted. They wanted him to feed them. Feed us bread. If you're God, feed us like you fed our ancestors when we came out into the wilderness centuries ago. There's a story told of a group of eight guys who decided to go on a hunting trip. They split up two by two, and they went off for the day. That evening, as they were gathering, six got back, and here comes one of them carrying the weight of his catch of the day. And he was tired. When he came all by himself, however, the other guy said, Hey, where's Harry? And the man carrying the deer said, Well, I had to think hard about this. But I knew if I left Harry, no one was going to steal him. <laughs> so he had to set his priorities right. And that's what Jesus wants us to talk about today as well. Priorities. Those issues of life that are so vitally important to us. Physical food is not enough. That's what Jesus is telling us this morning. We too need more than just the right foods. As you know, science has told us that if we eat the right food, we'll have a longer life. That we need to watch our nutrition and the medicines we take. However, as hard as these things are sometimes to do, they will not defeat death. Death has a 100% flat rate, and it's happened every year of this existence in the world. The only blessing about death is for you and me as Christians. And we need to make sure that we have memorial services or funeral services so that those members of our family who don't normally gather around God's Word have an opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So whatever you do, put that in your living trust to have a service uh, when God says, come on home, so that you can touch members of your family, friends, and neighbors who may not otherwise hear the good news of Christ. So how do we go from food to death? I know that when I was in my teens, I felt that I'd never get old. I used to look at those elderly people and think, man, I'll never get like that. However, today, I go to restaurants or whatever, I get the senior discount without even asking. Why? My body's wearing out. One day, I will die. When Jesus moved to this topic, of bread to death, he offended the Jews of his day. And this morning, these words will shock us as well. We heard them read a moment ago, and I don't know about you, but they were shocking to me. Listen once again. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. I'm offended by this talk about eating human flesh and drinking human blood. It turns many people off. They ask, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? What does he think we are, cannibals? As much as we're offended by this talk, the Jews of his day were especially offended because after all, they were not allowed to eat any blood in their meat. The word kosher means to cleanse, and it particularly referred to meat. They had to completely drain all the blood out of the meat that they ate. In this shocking way, Jesus is telling us that he is going to die in our place, and in theirs as well. This too troubles us. Are my sins really that bad? that someone has to die in order to pay for them? I don't think I'm really that bad. 
Do you? Many people think they're pretty good people. Surely we need to make a few changes. Maybe a couple New Year's resolutions each year will help us. But are we really bad enough that in order to clear our sins, God has to send His Son to die on our behalf? And so the Jews protested, just as often we protest at this fact. And Jesus' response is, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. There's no doubting what Jesus was telling them and us. Without His death and resurrection, to pay for our sins, all we can do is hang around and hang on to life as long as possible. It's a temporary experience, but one day we too will die. Period. There's also one way to real living. Receive Christ. Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. The Father will repeat this through his Son in the upper room when Jesus prepares to go to be betrayed in the garden. There we read, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Drink, this is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Jesus talks to us about this intimacy in the words, You in me and I in you. We hunger for intimacy, don't we? Isn't that why we want to know the private lives of movie stars and athletes and other people of importance? We all like to drop names of famous people we've met personally. We have this deep hunger to be intimate. We want to know the inside scoop. We do this with friends. We tell our friends that we have been doing and we ask what they've been doing. We share secrets. This intimacy is friendship, isn't it? And it's the way we express love for one another. Christians want intimacy with God. We want to know God. We want to worship Him. We want Him to know that, that He loves us and that uh, we are not alone when we face the struggles of life. And that's what happens when we believe in Him. We want to keep coming and keep believing in Him. We want to grow in this intimacy. One day a pastor had a midweek Bible study class. And during the class, someone walked in who wasn't usually participating in this class. So after the class, this man went up to the pastor and said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I feel so empty. I'm scared. I just left the doctor's office. He told me I have six months to live. After I left this office, I realized that I have no spiritual resources, no inner strength to cope with this finding. There's nothing to fall back on or to lean on. Many people would be surprised to hear me say that because they know I have plenty of money and they also see me as a pretty strong character. And then he stopped talking and silence filled the room. Finally he said, you know, I'm poor in the things that count most. I put my faith in the wrong things. I'm destitute spiritually. I can pick up the phone, call any bank around here, and just on my word, they'll loan me a lot of money. He then leaned forward, shaking his head. I guess there's some things that money can't buy. What about us? How's your relationship with Christ? Have you heard the joy and peace that God has for each and every one of us? Have you learned how that joy is so intimately part of us and necessary for us to face the events day in and day out? That's what Jesus wants us to know. He says again, This is the bread, Jesus says, that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but you who feed on this bread will live forever. Have you learned how to share your work, your family, your life, your personal relationship with Jesus, to depend upon God's wisdom and grace and forgiveness every single day? Do you long for a closer walk and connection with Jesus? That's what Jesus wants for you and me, to be a very important, intimate part of our day in and day out life. Talk with God about those intimacies that you're facing, your secrets, your fears, your worries, your concerns.
Today, we have the opportunity to be expectantly waiting on the Lord. Because as we come today, we realize that it's a day we celebrate the very supper that He broke for us. So that we can take into our frail bodies the very body and blood of Jesus in bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Discovering our dependency on Him is so vitally important. We would be ready to receive His strength, His grace, His power. Be ready to rise and obey Jesus as He tells you to do when you go forth in the peace that passes our understanding. These offensive sounding words of Jesus are our words of life. He died that we might live, and He lives that we might never die. Do you believe this? Yes. Yeah, Jesus is essential for each and every one of us. Believe in Him, and you'll never die. Do you believe this? Yes. 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 Now may that peace that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.